Hi everyone, Nikos Papidis here from Sunny Cyprus, a cold Cyprus, but nonetheless a sunny Cyprus. Now, today's video tutorial is another ICT Pass paper. It's a very recent one, 2023, November paper two, and it's a request from one of you guys. I've had a look at the question paper and this paper is packed. There's so much to do and it involves some of the newer features of the syllabus like creating charts in Excel and adding links in PowerPoint. So if you are going to practice this paper, then you need to keep an eye on the time because it can slip away from you because there's just so much to do. So let's get started with this paper straight away. Okay, so the first thing is to make sure you've got all the files in the folder. I've created the folder 2023 November paper two. I've got all my files here and I've also got a copy of my question paper here, which I'm going to open so we can start this paper. So let's jump over to this screen. And the first thing that we need to do is first of all, check that we've got all these files. We do. So we've already done that. We're going to go to task one, which is creating the evidence document. So it says open this file here and make sure that your name, center number and cadet number will appear on every, pa or every page of this document. It doesn't say where, so I'm just going to put it in the header. Save this document as evidence in capital letters and followed by your candidate number. So it should look something like this. OK, so I'm going to open up the document. Let's just bring this over to this side. There we go. And the first step, I'm going to double click in the header, enter my details. And then click inside here to come out the header. And now I'm going to go to File, Save As. Make sure I'm saving this as a Word document. And give it the name Evidence 234. And click on Save. There we go. My evidence document is set up. OK, so task two is we can see here it says that you're going to be editing a report about video gaming. The company uses a corporate house style for all their documents. Paragraph styles must be created modified and applied as instructed. So we're going to be creating, we're going to be modifying as well at the same time. Okay, number one, using suitable software, uh, open the file n2302review.rtf and set the page setup a four landscape orientation, two and a half centimeter. Do not make any changes to these settings. So this has already been set up for us. Okay, three stars have already been created again do not make any changes unless these have unless you're instructed to do so save the document in your work area with the name vg review make sure that it is saved in the format of your software that you're using place in your evidence document screenshot to show this file has been saved make sure that there is evidence of the file type okay so number one i don't really have to do anything i'm just going to open up the document nt302 review which is that one there. Let's just drag this one over here as well. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to save this. So file, save as, uh, save it as a Word document, and I'm going to save it with capital letters VG Review. Again, make sure you're using capital letters because that's how it displays it in the question paper. Okay, and I'm just going to minimize that. And now I want to show evidence of that document and its file type. So uh, to do that, I can use, well, first of all, I'm in dark mode. Guys, I don't want you using dark mode, remember. I can use the details view. So if I go to view and I'm using the details view, that's absolutely fine because I can see the extension there. And it also says it's a Microsoft Word document. Another good view is the content. So we can use this one as well. Now I've zoomed my screen uh, to 125% to make it easier for you to uh, see the video. But you can see again in content, you can see uh, where are we, the VG review and it shows that docx. Now I'm going to go and use the details. That one there, I'm gonna take a quick screenshot of that. And I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna take a screenshot of my folder as well. There you go. And that I'm going to add now inside my evidence document under evidence one and paste that there. OK, so again, uh, don't make your uh, screenshots too big, but make sure that what you are required to show in the screenshot is clearly visible and easily readable all your screenshots. So um, dark mode here, not a good idea, but I'm not going to change my settings for this. So make sure you're not using dark mode. It doesn't print very well. Again, I've done something. I'm going to click on save, scroll, 
go over here and now we're going to go back to the question page okay so the next part is to remove any page breaks from the vg review document that one there so let's jump over to see our word document here it is here now to do this what i need to do is to make sure i'm in the home ribbon i'm going to click on the show hide button here and that's going to reveal all the hidden characters in the document like page breaks uh, paragraphs symbols spaces everything as i scroll down i can see here i've got page break remember page breaks are like characters they've got a start and an end depending on where you put your insertion point you're going to use backspace or delete accordingly so i've got my insertion point at the end of the page break so i'm going to press backspace that page break is gone let's go down there's another one here on this time i'm going to click at the beginning of that page break right there and i'm going to press delete because i want to delete the page break in front of it okay good i've made the change i'm going to click on save I'm going to remove the show hide button there and go back to my question paper. Right, place in the header of the document automated page numbers. So I want automated page numbers left aligned. Place in the footer the text market review by. I'm just going to remove that so I can copy that with a colon at the end. And then it wants followed by a space and your name, center number, and candidate number right aligned. Okay, so let's jump over here. So in my header section i'm going to double click in here so at the top i want automated page numbers left aligned so as soon as i double click in the header i can see the header and footer ribbon at the top i'm going to go to page number and i, I can choose any one of these this one here i could choose also current uh, position the current position is where my insertion point is i like using that one because it just keeps me on my toes um, if I am going to be adding any other ones on a different alignment, using current position is always best because it won't delete the other um, alignments that you've got in the header. So I've done that one. Go to my footer. Now in my footer, it wants place in the footer the text market review by. So I copied that. There it is there. Followed by a space. And then my name. Let's see what seven two three four my candidate number and it wants this right aligned so i can just do this by going to home and clicking on the right align it says make sure that all the margins uh, or all the alignments match the page margins no other text or placeholders are included in the header or footer areas headers and footers are displayed on all pages now i do get i have had a student ask me in the past why do they say this because when you put the the items in the header or the footer they're automatically aligned within the page margins and we can see here that my footer here is in line with the page margin and so is the number here with the left margin so why would it say that this is because some people instead of using the header and footer ribbon to add something like a page number or their name they go and add a text box and if you do add a text box now this is the wrong thing to do i'm just demonstrating this so if I add a text box, I could type my details here, let's say, and the rest of it, I can move that. And then I move my text box, let's say if it wanted it to be right or left aligned, I put it there. So now when I double click over here, we can see that this text box with my details, this placeholder is not within the page margins. So that's why they give you that. If you're, if you're doing the correct way, it's not going to be an issue. So I'm just going to delete that text box, delete it and good okay i've made a change i'm going to click on save and then go to the question paper number four select the subheading video games so i want to find the subheading video games okay and the following text up to and including the paragraph ending transactions and advertisements okay change the page layout so that only this text is displayed in two columns of equal width with a two centimeter space between them okay so the first thing i want to do is to find the subheading video games now i could just go through here and i found it here already there's a video games i'm just going to make that quick selection there now i prefer the selection method of using the shift button now some of you that you prefer the click and drag and keep dragging until you find where you have to go which is transactions and gaming i think it is transactions and advertisements okay so that's up to that paragraph you see it's very hard to do when you're doing it with the with the drag and drop method transactions and advertisements there it is there okay so what i tend to do just to make it easier is i simply make a small selection here 
scroll down, find where I want to go to, um, which we said is here. I'm going to hold the shift button and now I'm going to click at the end of that paragraph and that's going to select everything between those two points. So much easier rather than having to worry about keeping your mouse on the on uh, your finger on the mouse button. OK, I want to change this. I'm going to go to I want to make it a column. So I'm going to go to layout ribbon at the top columns, more columns. I'm going to choose two columns. I'm going to increase the spacing by two. Uh, it doesn't want a line in between, so I'm just going to leave that there and click OK. So now I've got that as two columns. All right, let's move on to a question paper. So we've done number four, we go to number five. Create and store the following style, basing it on the default normal paragraph. Now, this is so important. Whether it tells you to do this or not, you have to put it on normal. Uh, take a screenshot to show that you've defined the settings for VG subhead. OK, so it's the we're going to have that title there. I'm just going to get rid of that so I can copy that. OK, and make sure that there is evidence that you base this on the default normal paragraph style places in your evidence document. OK, so I want the font style to be sans serif. I'm going to use Arial for sans serif, the size 20 alignment center, bold and italic, single, no spacing before or after. So let's go to our question paper now. Very, very important point, guys. Very important. Now, listen carefully. Depending on where your insertion point is, now I've just finished working with this uh, double paragraph here and I've got this selected. Now, wherever your insertion point is, or wh whatever you've got selected, when you create this new style, it's going to apply it automatically to whatever paragraph your insertion point is in. So if I've got all of this selected, it's going to apply to all of this. If I just click, for example, here, anywhere in that paragraph there. So I'll do it this way. I'm going to create the style and you're going to see what happens. Now, so what I tell my students is always before you do anything, wherever you click, just go and see what style is being used. And I can see that this paragraph here is VG body. And that's where I've got my insertion point. And so I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to click on this little arrow here to open up the styles. And I'm going to create a new style. Now, the new style is going to be called capital VG subhead. And it says font style, it wants a serif font, but I need to base this on normal. So first thing I'm going to do, because my insertion point was in a paragraph with the VG body style, it's basing it on VG body. And we don't want that. We want to base it on normal, like it said. Uh, style for following paragraph, just leave that like that. And we're going to use Arial for the font, the sensory font we're using, size 20. Then it wants center alignment. So I'm going to make that center aligned, bold and italic and line spacing single. So I'm going to go to format paragraph and I'm just going to make sure that the line spacing here is single and before and after spacing zero. Click on OK. So I've done all of this. I'm not going to take my screenshot yet because I haven't actually created this yet. So I'm going to click on OK. And look, because my insertion point was in that paragraph, it automatically applied that formatting, the VG subhead to that paragraph. So I just need to make sure I click back and put that back to VG body. OK, that's extremely important for you guys. OK, the next step is I want to show evidence. So I'm going to just open this again. Just bring that down over here on the right hand side there. And I'm going to go to, I'm not going to click on any of these because if I do, it's going to apply this style to whatever I, I'm, wherever I am in that document, wherever my insertion point is. And I'm just going to click on the little drop down arrow next to this one, modify. And now I'm going to take a screenshot of that. And it says I need to show, start maybe it's over here. I need to show that it's based on normal. So we can see this screenshot here. It's got, I'll just highlight these. You know, I'm not going to add them highlighted, but it shows here the style based on normal. And it shows here everything that I've done in this section here. OK, so that's what they're looking for. So I'm just going to go to my evidence document, which is. Okay, I need to close that dialog box. 
and now I can open my evidence document, there it is, and go to step number five and paste that in there. Now that's really big, um, but that's okay. What you want to make sure with this uh, screenshot is that this writing down here, this small writing here is visible in your printout. Okay, that's extremely important, so everything has to be visible. Okay, I'm just gonna click on save and go down to there, and now we're gonna go back to our question paper because we've done that. Okay, so I've completed that, taken the screenshot, I've done that. Make sure that there is evidence that you've based this on the default normal. I've done that. Places in the evidence document, done that. Number six, identify the four subheadings in the document and apply the VG subhead to each one. So I want four subheadings. So here we go. I'm going to, that one. I'm just going to use control to select multiple selections, that one. Oh, look at that, eSports, that's a bit tricky, that one there, isn't that's three, there should be one more. There it is, mobile devices. And I'm going to add the VG subhead to that. Okay. Um, that, that's okay. Now, I can see that subheading is just sitting there on its own, everything's up here. Leave that alone, we'll, we'll see what it looks like at the end, we'll fix it at the end if needed. Okay, so if we go to our question paper, so we've done number six, locate and move the paragraph, aggressive competition between, and it ends with the video game industry, so that it appears as a new paragraph immediately after the paragraph ending, gamer controls the action. So the first thing I want to do is, in my document, is find that paragraph aggressive competition. To make it easy for me, I'm just gonna press Control F on my keyboard, and I'm just going to type the word aggressive, and I should, there it is, it's found it for me. So again, I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to select the first part, and all the way up to, don't want to move that. So I'm just going to select a little bit there, and I want to go up to the video game industry. So I'm going to hold shift up to that point there. Now I want to move this. I'm not going to click and drag this. That's just a waste of time. Let's just close this up. Uh, Fine section here. I'm going to press Control X to cut that, and then I'm going to find the area where it says Gamer controls the action, the last uh, at the end of the paragraph. So I could use again, there it is, it's in the top one. I could use the Control F again. I'm going to press Enter and Control V to paste. Now, can you see I've got an extra space here from when I pressed Enter? That's not keeping everything consistent. So I'm just going to delete. So if I go away, if I click here and just press delete there, there you go. That's going to move that paragraph up and I've got consistent spacing now of everything. Okay, let's go to our question paper. Number eight, using the data in the file n2302players.csv, create a vertical bar chart to show the worldwide distribution of online game players for the year 2022 only so this is where the the new, newer components of the syllabus come in um the syllabus up to 2025 but also up to 2028 because it's not going to change so here we want to create the chart and we want to do some pro uh, changes on the properties of this chart so let's begin with that now so i want to open n2302 so going to my question paper here I'm just going to do a quick save. So in here, just click on save so I don't lose anything. Open my folder and I'm going to open up N2302 players. Okay, that's going to open up in Excel and I can see my data. And I'm just going to select all of these, double click between two columns so that I can see all of the data. So it expands all the columns to show everything. This one's a bit big, so I can reduce that one. Okay, so I need to create a chart to show the players for only 2022, which is this one here. Now, I will, I can automatically see now that these headings here, these are numbers, and these are going to cause problems. They're very, very sneaky. If I was just to create a chart like this, a vertical chart like this, insert, and I create a vertical chart, you can see automatically that region is seen as a category here and the values 2018 2020 and 22 are seen as values and they're plotted and that's because they are charts 
So we don't want that. Now, there's a number of ways to combat this. So if I was to select this and hold the control button and this to select and create the chart, that will cause me the issues. And they've done this on purpose and it's added the region again as a category. So the one way to do this is to ignore that one and just choose the data here and do insert and click on that. And that's perfect. That's my vertical bar chart. I don't have the title. But if you want to use my particular method, what I would do is so that you can create any chart they throw at you, always get rid of that top left corner. So I'm just going to click on that and press delete. I don't need the title region because that's just saying these are the regions. Now I can select all of this. You can now, of course, select that. Let's just do that as well. Insert and that will work perfectly. You can see absolutely fine. But I want you to learn how to create charts. So I'm going to select this chart like this. I'm going to create a chart, insert. Now I've got a video tutorial only on charts. Make sure you watch that. So I'm going to have a link to that in the description um, at the bottom. So make sure you learn charts because this comes up quite a lot and there are a lot of marks on chart creations. So I've got my charts here, but it's got for all the years, all three years. I'm going to right click on this chart. Like that, right there, I'm going to say select data. And now in this window here, I don't want 2020 and 18. So I'm just going to remove that tick and remove that tick and click OK. And there we go. I now have the chart that I want. And if I did want, let's say for 2018 and 2022, then I could just right click, select data and just choose 2018, 2022. And look at that. It's just so much easier when you learn how to create charts properly. So I don't need that. I'm going to click on OK. The next thing they want me to do is to change the chart title. So I'm, I'm not going to keep going backwards and forwards on the question paper. So I don't get you guys dizzy. So it wants a particular chart title. So I'm going to click in here. I've copied the title and I'm going to paste that there. It wants a category axis title called region. So I want to add my category axis titles. So clicking on my chart will put this plus sign next to it. Clicking on that, I can go to my axis titles, click on that, tick it. And now I've got my, uh, my Y axis and my X axis title. My category axis title should be region with a capital start. It doesn't want anything to do with the value axis title. So I can delete that one by selecting and pressing delete. Then it says display only the data values along the top of each bar. So on the top of each one of these uh, columns or bars, I want to add the data. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. And here it's got data labels. I can click on the arrow and I only want the outside end. So I want it on the top of each bar. I don't want it inside or a call out. I just want it on the top. OK, that's great. Click over here, get rid of that plus sign. Uh, do not display a legend. So this here is my legend at the bottom, the 2022 part here. So again, I'm going to click on the plus sign and remove the legend. Great. And then it wants me to format the value axis title. Let's have a look at this part in the paper. So it wants me to format the value axis title. So it's got the minimum value of zero, maximum of 1500 and increments of 300. So we're now going to go to my chart. I'm going to click one time on the values so I get this border going around the values. Then I'm going to place my mouse on top of that one or on top of the border, right click, and I should be able to see format axes. And then from here, let's just get rid of that. I'm going to set the minimum to zero, the maximum to 1500, and the major to 300. So we can see on the left hand side where the Y values are, the Y axis, we can see the minimum value is zero, the maximum is 1500 and the incrementation is 300, which is what it asks us to do. So let's move on. Now, the next step is it says insert the chart after the paragraph ending game players in 2022. Uh, make sure that the chart and all data fits within the column width. All data labels are displayed in full with no overlap. There is a six point space after the chart. So let's go and do that one now. So with my chart selected, so basically if I just click on the chart, we see the sizing tab. So I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard 
and then I'm going to go to my document and I'm going to find where it says online game players 2022 the last paragraph here it is here okay so I'm just going to click here and press enter after that I'm going to control V to paste my chart it's actually fitted it in perfect for me within uh, the column here and it's within the margins so that's absolutely fantastic but if you needed to change it at all you can click on it and change the sizing now it says it wants a six point space after the chart i can already see there's a, a little space here so the subheading esports is not um stuck to the chart but just to make sure i'm going to click on the esports subheading here go to paragraph and just say before i'm going to add six points now i don't think i'm going to see a difference because there's already quite a, a gap there anyway and there you go i mean i've added the the six point space i can see there's a little space here so um, that was absolutely fine all right let's go back to the question paper so that's number 12 done now the style named vg list has already been created stored and applied to the five list items in the report modify the VG list style so only the following formatting is applied so basically I need to modify a, uh, a style which has already been created this one here uh, placing your evidence document screenshots of the style settings for the VG list style to show that you've changed these uh, make sure that the screenshots show all the changes made to this style okay so um, I'm just going to follow through these here. So let's just go back to my paper. I'm going to go find that list. Here it is. There we go. We've got the list here. Okay. Uh, modify the VG list. So it says, okay. So these are the five items. I don't need to select them, but you know, why not? We're going to change them anyway. Um, I'm going to click on my, in the home ribbon, go to the styles. I'm going to modify the VG list. So click on the little arrow here modify that and I'm just going to change what it says so font style it says sans serif so I'm going to change the font style to Arial it wants size 10 we want a left aligned to margin so I want these to be left aligned they are left aligned um, italic with numbered list ie one two three so for the numbered list I'm going to go to format I'm going to go to numbering and I'm going to choose a number sequence here just wants one, two, three, and it's actually got one uh, a stop of a point after the number. So that's the one there. Click on OK. Uh, line spacing is single, so I need to format the paragraph as well. So single line spacing, it's already there. And no points after, no points before. So I'm just going to change that one to zero and click on OK. Now, um, this is where I'm going to take my screenshot. So I can just click on OK. And then just, just to be sure, go to here and click on modify again. And I'm going to simply take my screenshot. And that's going to be my evidence. Okay. Um, so let's just minimize that for now. And we can see, click OK here. We can see this list now has already changed. All right. So I'm going to go to my evidence document. So I don't forget to add this in. So this is, it's actually great. This evidence document, they actually tell you which um screenshot you have to add where so this is for number 13 so i'm just going to move this down to the next page there we go so it's together with the picture and i know that my next evidence is going to be question 16. so i'm just going to click on save there and i'm going to close that i'm also going to save my document okay back to the question paper okay it says format the paragraph that starts a mobile gaming is expected so that is indented uh 1.5 centimeters from both left hand and right hand margins that's number 14 so i want the ones a mobile game is is expected okay here it is so this is the power so it wants the paragraph now one way to select the paragraph is three clicks in the paragraph one two three that will select the paragraph and just so you know where the paragraph is you can use the show hide buttons we can see where that paragraph break is here so i'm just going to select that paragraph and I want to indent this, so I'm going to go to my paragraph. And then I'm going to go to left. I'm going to increase that to 1.5 and the right to 1.5. They're going to want a border around this as well. Let's just click on that. So that's that indented. Um, it doesn't say anything about borders. 
But if it did ask for a border, then you would simply select your paragraph, go to your borders here, go to borders and shading. And then from here, you can just add your border, choose the line that it wants, the thickness, so and, so, and just add that. And that will give you a border around that. So that will probably be something that they could ask you to do. They have done in the past, but not in this case. Uh, let's go to number th uh, the next one. Okay, so that's it. Um, spell check and proofread the document. Make sure that the list is not split over two columns. There are no widows or orphans. There are no blank pages. Original styles are maintained. All styles are applied consistently. Spacing is consistent between all items. So if I go to my document, I can see I've got some spelling mistakes here. So I'm just going to right click on those and correct those with the first choice it gives me. Um, the grammatical mistakes like commas and this, that, the other, you don't really need to worry about too much. You can change them. No one's going to call you out on them. The, it's the spelling mistakes that you want to have a look out for. Look for any widows or orphans. Um, consistent spacing. So if you've got like uh, a spacing which looks like this, and we can see that the spacing from here to here is that big, whereas for this one it's smaller, that's where we're looking at. That's not consistent. So we want to make sure our spacing is consistent. Uh, no widows or orphans. Now, this you could move down to the next page. You don't have to. Um, the reason you don't have to is because it's quite a big paragraph. We don't only have one line which is going over to the next page or one word. We've got like three, four lines there. So we can just leave that one there. There's no need to bring all of this paragraph down by pressing enter. Uh, the list is intact. So all well and good. No, no questions on tables in this one. Okay, so we've finished with this. Now the last thing that we need to do is print. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to File, Print. Now I'm not going to print this on paper. And if you don't have a printer at home or you, or you just don't want to waste your printing, that's fine. Print to PDF printer. It's going to look exactly the same. And it's just going to make sure that you're practicing your printing skills. So I'm just going to click on Print. And then from here, I'm going to just call this a Word Document. So I know what it is that I'm printing. Click on Save. And that's it it's saved so now i've finished um i believe i have totally finished with that part i'm going to task 3 database so i can close my word document and we can start working with the database okay so let's start with the database it says here you're now going to prepare some reports make sure that all currency values display the same currency symbol it doesn't say which symbol so that's okay same currency symbol and I'll set to do decimal places. Well, if it's currency, it's going to be two decimal places anyway. Examine the file n2302vgames.csv and identify the most appropriate field to set as a primary key. Close this file. Using database software, import the file this and use these field names and data types. And at the bottom it says, set the identified field as the primary key, save the data. Now, what's important to understand here, guys, is something we've been seeing with this new syllabus, the way you have to spend a little bit of time and just analyze the data and understand it a bit before you start importing or working with it. And the same goes for when you're doing paper three with the Excel file. You need to analyze that spreadsheet, understand it. What is it about? What are the different fields you've got and the different types of data? What do they represent? So now they're actually forcing you to do that by having to identify the field, which is going to be a primary key. So I'm going to open up the file N2302V Games, this one here. Okay, now what's important is I don't mess this data up. Now, the fact that it's a CSV file, even if I format this or do whatever I want, and I try to save it, it's not going to save the formatting. But at the end of the day, I just want to make sure I do not disturb the data. I don't change the data because I'm going to be importing this data to create the table in the database. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here, double click between two columns so I can see all of the data, nothing being chopped off. OK, now the idea is I have to decide which one of these is going to be used as the primary key field. So I've got things like game title, rank, game code, so on and so forth. And I can see if I scroll down, how many feel all the way down? I've got like 500, there you go, 500 rows. I'm not going to go through this that way. And in this case, it's kind of easy. You just reading the titles, it says game code, but I'm not going to go with the name because the exam board does have a tendency of throwing these little uh, tricks or these spanners in your thinking. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to select all of this data. Okay. 
And I'm going to use conditional formatting to identify all the ones where there are duplicates. So if I choose from home and I go to conditional formatting, manage rules, I'm going to create a new rule. And I'm going to choose this one here, format only unique or duplicate values. So I'm going to format all the ones which are duplicate and the column which has no formatting at all means it has no duplicates. So that has to be the primary key. So I'm just going to format anything which is a duplicate with a fuel color, which is I don't know, this orangey color here. Click OK, OK and OK. And there we go. So everything highlighted is a duplicate. So I can see here in the game, I've got a duplicate here. These two are duplicates, all these orange. So the game title cannot be the primary key field. And looking at these, all of these columns have got a duplicate somewhere. The only one that doesn't is this one. And if I go all the way down, you're going to see none of these codes are highlighted orange. And that definitely means all of these values here are unique. So my game code is going to be the primary key field. So all I have to do now is just close this without saving, do not save. And now I can proceed with importing that file. So I'm going to right click new database, Microsoft Access Database. I'm not going to give it a name. I'm just going to double click to open it. Here it is opened up on my other screen. There it is there. Now, if you do get a new table, which is created in here, whatever, you can just close that. You just want a blank slate i'm going to go to external data source from file text file i'm going to go to my desktop where i've got my files there it is there and i've got my folder here and i want this one here n2302v game so i'm going to double click on that now i want to import this source file as a, a new table so i'm going to click on ok here, I just double check and make sure that what I'm importing is readable. Okay, we don't get any uh, weird characters which are not readable. If you do, make sure you ask for help. It probably means your data file is corrupt. It's delimited with uh, char uh, characters like a comma or a tab. Well, it's actually commas. Next, we want the first row to be the field names because we, we can see this first row, it's actually the field names, they're not data. And the symbol which is separating all the fields is a comma. Go to next. And this is where I'm going to set up my, my data types. Now I can do this one by one from here, but it's easier to click on the advanced because the advanced looks the same as the question paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag my question paper. Ah, that's not going to work, is it? No, I'll just, I'll just switch between the two. So if I just go over here, so I want, if I just look here very carefully, game title text, rank is a number, zero decimal places. So that's going to be an integer. Uh, text, text, this is a number, again, zero decimal places. So I'm going to make that a long integer as well. These are text. This is a number, three decimal places, and it has to display three decimal places. So I'm going to keep my eye out on that. And this one here is price. So it's going to be currency, two decimal places, that's going to happen by default because it's a currency data type. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back over here and start working on this. So the game title is text. That's okay. The rank is a number. So this is a long integer. I'm going to leave it as a long integer. If I have a look at what's in the rank, these are actually small numbers. So I could get away with just an integer field. But to play it safe, I'm going to leave long integer. And if you don't know the difference, if you set something as an integer, it can only hold numbers within a range of around about plus or minus 32,000 something. So if you put a larger number, it won't allow you to get an error. But if you use a long integer, it will allow for very, very big numbers. So as you're not required um, to distinguish between those two, we're just going to leave it as long integer to play it safe. OK, then the game code is text. The platform is text. Release year is a number, zero decimal places. So that I'm going to leave that as a long integer as well. Um, we can see that the release year is actually uh, four figures. So that's OK. The genre here is text. The game publisher is text. So that's good. Now, global sales, it wants a number, three decimal places. So I'm just going to make that, leave that as a double because I'm going to have decimal places and later on I have to remember to make sure that it displays three decimal places and price instead of a double, I'm going to use currency because this is going to attach the, the symbol as well. 
So I'm going to click on OK here. I'm done with that. Go to Next. My primary key field, we identified this already. I'm not going to create a new one. We said the primary key field is the game code. We identified that when we analyze the CSV. And then I'm just going to go to Next and Finish. I'm just going to leave that default name and close. OK, so here's my table. If I open this, first of all, I notice I only get one table, which is great. If you get two tables generated, it probably means one is the one that's holding the errors. That means you imported with errors. So you need to delete both of them and start again. OK, so um, next step, I'm going to go to my home, go to the design view, and I'm just going to go through these again and I'm going to make any changes that I need to. So looking over on my question paper, um, the release year and the rank, these are zero decimal place. So the only one I really need to change is this one here, global sales. I want to make global sales to be three decimal places. So that's a number. It says down here in the properties, it's a double. I need to make the decimal places three, but that's not enough. And as I said, I do these tutorials so you can learn. If you don't know this, if I leave that as three and run this now, so I'm going to save that, we can see that some of these have got three, some of them have got two. And the reason is this is 4.610. It cuts off the zero. But the question paper says it has to display three. So I'm going to go back. And although I've made it decimal places three, I'm also going to change the format to fixed. By making it fixed, no matter if it's got a zero at the end or not, it's going to have three decimal places. So I'm going to click on save and preview. And now you can see my global sales. All of these have got three decimal places. I think I've done all of that. My price is currency and it's got everything there, which is great. Um, the next thing um, is I need to save my data. So I'm just going to click on save. And placing your evidence document a screenshot showing the field names, data types, and primary key used in the table. Okay, so very important, guys, when you're taking your screenshot from here, you need to take a screenshot that shows the name of your table as well. So because I'm really comfortable with what I'm doing and I know I've done this correctly, I might even take a bigger screenshot, and this isn't going to make any difference at all. So if I add a new one, and I can take my properties down here as well. Because I've got that global sales number selected, that one there, and it shows the properties here, field size, format, and decimal places, so that's fixed. You're not going to get any marks for that, but eh, it doesn't hurt. So all you really need is just this top part here. Make sure you've got that name at the top displayed. Okay, so I'm going to go to my... And this is step 16. This is great. I love the fact that on this paper, they've actually given you um, the steps for the evidence. I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. Not too small. There you go, Justin. Because now I can see if I, in case I've missed any uh, screenshots, I know which question I've missed. Okay, so my next screenshot is going to be step 17. So I'm going to click on save. I'm on question 17 now. So let's go to that. So I can just close that one now that's saved and let's go to 17. Import the file n2302 platforms.csv as a new table in your database. Use the field names and data types as provided. So it's they're probably all going to be text or there might be some. We'll just leave it as it is. Set platform as the primary key and then place in your evidence document a screenshot showing the field names, data types and primary key used. OK, so let's go back. So I'm going to go to here, external data, new source, file, text file, browse. We're looking for N2302 platforms, that one there. And again, we're importing to a new table. Click OK. Check everything looks, everything's readable. Next, first row contains field names. It's a comma separated. Next, field names. Now, I don't need to do anything because it says leave them as is. But if I just have a quick look. Yeah, they're all, all text except for produce, which is a long integer. And if I have a look at this, it's actually a date again, so that's fine. But I don't need to make any changes because it says just leave it as it is. Uh, personally, I like to double check. Go to next. Primary key, it's going to be the platform. That's what it said. And that's it. Next and finish. And again, I'm looking for one table to be generated. There it is which means everything looks good and that symbol looks good as well. And if I open this up, 
I can see my data has imported properly. Actually, that's the wrong one. It's this one, platforms. There it is. Okay, so everything looks good. Let's close it now. A rule in Access is if you're not using something like a table or query or report, close it. Okay, let's move on. So, ah, now, ooh, there you go. I need to take a screenshot of that as well, don't I? So let's just open that up. And I'm going to go to Home, Design View. And I'm just going to take a screenshot. Remember, take a screenshot of that file name as well. And we're going to go put that in number 17. There we go. So my next screenshot evidence is going to be the next question 18. I, I love that they've given you this. I'll just do a quick save on my evidence and minimize that. And now we can move on. So I can close that. I'll finish with it. Now, question 18. Create a one-to-many relationship between platform in the platforms table and platform in the games table. Okay, that's simple enough. Uh, we're going to go to our database tools. We're going to click on relationships. Now, if you're using uh, the 365 version of Access, you, you get these things in the relationships. Now, you don't want to delete these. You can, you can delete them, but just leave them alone. Um, I'm just going to scroll down so they're not visible. I'm going to right click in here, show table, and I'm going to add my two tables. I'm just going to expand this so I can see all the fields. There you go. And I want to link platform in this table with platform in this one. So I'm just going to click on this one and drag it and drop it on top of this one. Double check the table that it gives you. This is not what we're going to use for the screenshot, guys, because it says the word create, which means we haven't created it yet. So you won't get a mark for that. Make sure that it's choosing the right ones. It's a one-to-many relationship. Create. There we go. Now for my screenshot with this create. Now you can use this screen as evidence, but you have to make sure that your table is displaying all the fields. Otherwise, if it's not and it's like this, there's no way of proving that this line here connects to the platform field. OK, so you need to make sure this is expanded. If you know what you're doing and you're more comfortable, I always suggest double click on this line. So select it once and then double click on it. It will open up the relationship, place it underneath and then take a screenshot uh, together with that tab at the top. And that shows both um, both ways of showing evidence that you've created that screenshot, uh, that relationship. And it's really important to try and get all the marks you can. So that's number 18. OK, so that's done. I can close my relationships. Click OK. I'm going to save that and I can close that. And notice whenever I finish something in, in Access, I close what I've been working on. Let's move on. OK, in the games table, locate the record with the game code AC105 and mend the details as follows. So here I want to change some details. So rank should be 455, release year 220 and genre action. So let's go to our question paper. I'm going to open the games table and I'm just going to press Control F. Now, just to show you how it works, I'm going to be looking up the, the rank. Or actually, no, uh, the code, the game code AC105. So if I click anywhere in the game code column, when I press Control F, it will give me this one here in current field. So it's only going to search in that column where I've actually clicked it, which is game code. If I clicked anywhere else, then I can choose a current document and that will broaden the search to all the columns. So I want the whole field. So I want all of this to be found. So it's AC. 105 and if I press find next there it is and you can see in the game code that's the one that I want to modify so I can close that now I'm just going to expand this so I can there you go just read it a bit easier okay so I want the rank of that record to be four by five so this one here should be four by five by five uh, the release year 2020 so that's the release year so delete what's in there 2020 and the genre here is going to be action instead of simulation. Action. And just click anywhere. And as soon as you click away, as soon as you type something, it's automatically saved. Now, check your data for errors, it says, and save the data. Well, I've, it's saved automatically, so I just close that. Do you want to save? Yes, I do. Now, it gave me that because I also adjusted that column as well. OK, so that's number 19. So 20, add the following as a new record in the games table. 
check your data entry for errors, save the data. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the following. So I want to go in the games table. So let's go over here, open the games table. Now, the one way to do this and probably the way you would do this in this particular examination will be to open the games table, go to the scroll to the bottom or just click down here where you got the status bar down here where I am. So you here you can move to the next record, go to the previous, go to the last record, or you can click on this one here with a little that little yellow sun or star, and that takes you to the very last record. And this is where you will add the next record. And that's absolutely fine. This is probably this is the way you should do this here just to save time because this is really packed paper. But because I want to make sure I'm complete with everything I do in these tutorials and show you different things and make sure you know how to do a, a different question, I'm going to create a very quick data entry form to add that information in. So as I said, you don't have to, you can just add the information here. I'm not going to, I'm gonna close that. And if you want to skip ahead on this part of the video, that's absolutely fine, but data entry forms is part of the syllabus. So I'm just gonna go from here, make sure I've got this table selected. I'm gonna to go to create, I'm gonna choose form wizard. Make sure I'm choosing the correct table. So it's the games. So I want to make sure I've got games selected. I'm going to add everything and then click on finish and that's it it's just so easy isn't it and it's going to make it so much easier for me to add the entry now the next thing i'm going to do is especially if you want to design a data entry form which is going to be useful uh, uh user friendly i'm going to go to the design view i'm going to select all of these like that make them a bit smaller because the boxes don't need to be that big and in this empty space i'm going to add a few buttons i'm going to add a button from up here from the form design choose the rectangle and then just go to record operations add new record you can just click on finish or you can modify some of these i'm going to put text and finish there's my button okay and then i'm also going to add one more uh, let's just do a couple more very quickly so go to next record finish and then do one more go to previous record so these are just random buttons very useful go to previous record next and finish and I can also give a proper title at the top if I wanted to but that's it so if I now go from here I'm going to click on add record and look at that I can just add my information here so the game title is sprinter sprinter the rank is 134 the game code can you see it's so much easier to do this and you know you won't make mistakes and it's easier to edit records as well this is AC four one nine no one four nine let's see one four nine platform is gd in capital letters uh release year 1999 genre here's action game publisher i'm just going to copy that over and global sales 6.230 and price is 12.80 12.80 okay and that's it if i go to next record so the next so it adds this at the very very last record if i go to next record that's it it's been added so if i close that now yeah i might as well save that one. and go to my games i want to double check and make sure that has been added so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click again in the game code. I'm going to press Control F and I'm going to look for AC149, which is the record. I just add it. There it is there. It's right here. OK, and just double check that everything is correct. Now, one mistake that I do see students make, they have this table open. They open the form, they add the record, they close the form and then they look for the record to be in here. They can't find it. The reason they can't find it is because as you've got the table open it's not going to update automatically you have to close the table and then open it again and that record will be there okay so uh check your data i've done that let's go to the question so i've added this number 20 number 21. now using fields from both tables produce a tabular report okay now remember guys if you're going to create the report you can create labels you're going to create an extract the first thing you have to do is create a query so this I'm going to be creating a query first and I'm going to show you again the method that I use. 
I read through this, selects the records where game title includes the tech sport, release year is 2000 or later. Now, I don't start generating yet. I always start from this one here, which says show only the fields. And I start always from this line. I go and add all of these and then I go put my criteria in my query. So and it says these have to be in the right order as well. So let's um, jump into that straight away. So create. Go to create. I'm going to create a query design view. And just close the things that I don't want there. Close that property sheet as well. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say show table and I'm going to add my two tables. Uh, because it says from both tables, just make sure I can see all of those fields. There we go. Now, as I said, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at that, that line there, that second point. I'm going to add all the ones it says. So it says show only the records, uh, so only the fields rank game title release here. So double click on rank. Game title, release year, then uh, genre, global sales, and console name. On there. Global sales and console name is on this side. Console name in this order with data and labels displayed in full. Do not group the data. Okay, so I've done, I've done this this part here, which is the the long highlight here. Uh, the next part it says sort the data, so on and so forth. So since I've added everything, I can now go to the first two points and add my criteria. So game title includes the text sport. So I'm going to go to game title. Now, guys, I always say before you do anything, run your report, make sure it works. And then if it doesn't work, you know exactly what's causing the problem. So before I add any criteria, I'm going to click on run. There you go. My query works. It shows everything. Perfect. Add the first criteria, game title has to include the tech sport. So I'm going to do like, and then I'm going to put star, the asterisk, the wild card, and it should have the word sport, and then the wild card. Now the wild card basically means it's looking for anything, has to have the word sport, and then anything after sport. So if I wanted something that begins with sport, then it will be sport asterisk. If I want something that ends with sport, then it will be uh, asterisk sport if i want sport anywhere in that text then it's asterisk sport asterisk so that will be contained so i've made a change i'm going to click run and now i can see that all of these in my game title contain the word sport in there okay so it contains the word sport uh, my results are now down to 90 i can see that down here okay so that's 27 of 90 go back the next criteria is release year 2011 or later. So release year is going to be greater than or equal to 2011. Run the query. Now I've got 32 results. Okay, so now we're going to go back over here. Sort the data into ascending order of release year has a page orientation. So all of these are part of the report. The query section is just those two points. So I can close my query. So I'm just going to click on save. I'm going to give the query name the question number. So question 21 or query 21. And I'm going to click on OK. Now I close the query because I have finished with it. OK, uh, next part is I'm going to start the report, create report wizard. I'm going to choose my query. I'm going to add everything in and I'm going to go to next. Now it says we're not going to group. Now, if I create my report based on this table, we can see there's no grouping. If I base it on this table, we can see it's going to group my console name and then under the console name, it's going to have all the other fields. It said no grouping, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to make sure I'm working based on this table here. Next, if you want to add other grouping on other fields, no, I don't. But if it did say, for example, a group with the global sales, for example, you can click on that and it will add that at the top. But I don't want any grouping, so I'm going to get rid of it. Next. So here it wants sorts the data in ascending order of release here. So ascending order release here. Page orientation portraits. I'll go to next. That's going to be portrait. Fits on a single page. So we're going to see that in a minute. 
and includes only the title sports title. So I'm just going to copy this uh, that title there. Control C. Uh, displayed in a larger font size, fully visible, has your name, center number, candidate number on the report. Okay, so I'm just going to go to next. There's my title. I'm going to add it up there. Let's get rid of all of that. And I'm going to go to finish. So here's my report. Um, I can see it's only one page because down here it only has one. It doesn't have an arrow to go to the next page. And what I need to make sure now, oop, I've got an E there missing. So I'm just going to close that preview and just get rid of that E. Okay, so what I need to make sure now is that these things here are in the right order that it's said. Now, even if you do add them in the right order when you're creating the query, if you then do your sorting, it messes it up. So I always say, just make sure you double check from here at the end uh, to make sure everything's in the right order. So the first thing that it wants, it, it said point number two, rank, then game title. So what I do, I'm just going to, so I'm just going to select two using the control button, make these a bit smaller to give me some space. And now I can just draw over these and just move these out the way. Then I can select these two, bring them over here. And then it's just a matter of playing around with these and going backwards and forwards to make sure everything shows. So I'm going to expand these. I'm going to click on view. Make sure ah, I can see some of that title is being chopped off. So I need a bit more space. So I'm just going to bring these out a bit a bit more like this. Ah, you get that sizing tab there. Let's just see if that's okay. Nope, I still need a bit more. So I'm just going to drag everything over here just to make that genre here a bit smaller. And it, it's a matter of fiddling around with this and just making everything fit and make sure everything is displayed. So there you go. I think that's enough. That really long one there is fully visible. You want to make sure everything's visible, otherwise you will lose marks. So now let's go adjust the rest of these. Make sure that release here is fully visible, even the title. Now I made a change. I go back. Yep, that fits. Design, rank. Does rank fit? Rank fits. That's fine. That's fully displayed. So I can just drag that over a little bit there. Genre here is, I think that should fit. Yes, it does. Nothing's being chopped off. Good. And we'll go to design view. Let's do the global sales. Open that up. That should also fit. Yes, it does. And the console name also fits. So that's fine. So the last thing that I want to do is to put my name, uh, center number, and candidate number on the report. Doesn't say where, so you can put it where you like. I'm going to put it in the page footer. So down here where I've got, this is the report. For, this is the page footer here. The report footer is actually underneath here. Don't need it now. I'm going to get rid of these uh, things in the, in the page footer. I'm going to add a label. I'm just going to put my details on the right hand side over here. There you go. So it doesn't say where, so that's absolutely fine. So if I now go and view, I can see at the bottom is my name, my details. And I think that's it. Let's have a quick look. So I've added my name as well. So again, if I have missed out something, now you do call me out and I love the fact that you're really, really paying attention, guys, when you're watching these videos and you're calling me out on my little mistakes. You have to understand this is a tutorial. I'm working really quickly and I don't do these papers before. So I'm working quite fast. So if I do make a small mistake, good on you if you spotted it. Put it in the comment and call me out on it. All right, so I think this is okay. I think I've got everything in the right order now. Have I? I don't think I have, to be honest. Um, rank, game title. You see, I haven't. I didn't put them in the right. So it uh, should be fields. Rank, game title. So let me just go fix that quickly. So quickly go to design view. And I've only got the first two mixed up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make these just a little bit smaller here. That one and that one. Just drag these over, take the rank. That should be the first one. It's actually a little bit off. There you go. And then put my game title in here and just drag that over. And then the rest I think should be correct. So it's rank, game title, release your genre, global sales, console name. Great. So there you go. All right. And nothing is chopped off.
there you go. So there you go. I nearly made a mistake. So you have to make sure that once you have printed everything off and, and you're happy with everything, um, double check and make sure it's all correct. So the last thing that I need to do is just to quickly print this. So I'm going to go to file print. And I'm just going to check the print preview. Always make sure you preview your work. Uh, make sure you haven't got something like 300 pages here or 50 pages. That means you've done something wrong. And there's no point just clogging up that printer. And once you've checked your preview, I'm going to just go to print. I'm going to print on my PDF printer. And um, I've already done a quick printout on this, I think. But let me just have a quick check. There it is. So I'm just going to delete that one. There you go. So I'm just going to go to print, click OK. And I'm just going to call that report 21 for question 21 and click save. OK, there you go. So that one's done. And I think this time I've done it correctly. But again, if I haven't, make sure you call me out. So we have finished that report. I'm going to close it. Do you want save changes? Yes. And now we can go back to our paper and we're going to the next one. And look at that. We've got another query and report. All right. So let's start with this one. OK, so we're going to start again, just like we did before. We're going to see what we have to do as far as the criteria is concerned. So it selects the records where genre is action or adventure. Rank is 200 or less. Now, in this one, we're going to create a new field called discount price. Um, that's calculated at runtime. The field will display the new price after a 5% discount has been applied. And this is going to be the, the price multiplied by 95 divided by 100. So they've been really nice to you. They're giving you the formula that you're going to use. Now, personally, I would multiply by 0.95, but that's fine. We're going to use the method they told us. Make sure to display as currency. And then point number three, this is the important one for me. This is where I'm going to start off from. So I'm going to start from this one here where it shows only the fields. And this is telling me all the fields that I need to include in this query. So that's where I'm going to start from. So we're going to jump over to here. I'm going to go to create query design. Query design view there. I'm going to yeah, just get rid of these from here for now. I'm going to right click here, show table. I'm going to add uh, tables here and just add these tables in and expand them so I can see all of the fields. So I'm going to add these to my query now. So that's game title rank genre, game title rank the genre, uh, console name release year, console name release year, and game publisher and price, game publisher and price. And then I want to add the discount price, which is the field that I need to generate. So before I generate any, anything new, I'm just going to click on run. Make sure that works. There we go. Everything looks good. Go back to our normal, uh, to the design view. So now I'm going to generate the discount price that it told us here. So I'm going to right click in here, go to build. And it says that the discount price is the price multiplied by 95 divided by 100. So I'm going to open my database, that one there, open the tables. I can see that price is inside the V games. So if I click on V games, I've got price. I'm going to double click on it. It's added in my expression builder. I'm going to multiply by 95 and divide by 100. Now, as I said, you, you can do uh, multiply by 0.95, but since they're giving you the formula, use what they've given you. Click OK. And before I do anything else, I'm going to run this to see what it looks like. Great. No errors. I can see that I need to change the title here to discount underscore price. And I also need to convert these to currency. So let's do these one by one. Back to design view. I'm going to right click on this one. I'm going to go to properties. That opens my properties. And I'm going to change the format to currency. Now, if it was, let's say, a number with decimal places, they wanted three decimal places like before, displayed like that, then you will make the format to fixed and you would change the decimal places to three or whatever it tells you. But this one is currency. So I've made a change. I'm going to run. There you go. Currency is there. Go back. And now I'm going to change the EXPR1. I'm not going to delete the colon. Be very careful. And I'm going to write the field name. Discount underscore price. With a capital D and a capital P. Correct. 
So I've made a change, I click on run. And that looks good, let's just expand that. Perfect, all great. So now I can go back to here. Now, I need to now go do the criteria. So I've done point number three, I've done point number two, which is the new field. Let's go back up to number one, which is the criteria. So from here, we're gonna to go to design view and it says it wants the genre is action or adventure. So here in the criteria row, I'm gonna write action. And then I'm gonna put space or, now access is really smart, adventure. So it's going to understand that this is a statement or it's not something I'm looking for and the action and adventure are the two strings that I'm looking for. So as soon as I click away, you can see action and adventure put in speech marks and the or statement here is uh, capitalized. So if I click on run, we should now see here in the genre only action and adventure. So that works. And my results are now down to 97. Good. The next one is the rank is 200 or less. So I'm going to go to rank. I'm going to put greater than or equal to 200. I'm going to click on run here again, just to view it. And there we go. And now I've only got 56 results okay that's great let's go to the question paper so i've done points one two and three um, it says do not group well that's going to be part of the report sorts the data into ascending order of the genre and ascending order of rank has a page orientation of landscape so this is part of the report so i can close my query so i'm just going to click on over here click on save i'm going to call that q 22 because that's question 22 or query 22 click ok and i close my query now notice i keep nothing open in access i close everything if i'm not using it it has to be closed so i'm going to go to create report wizard from here i'm going to make sure i choose the correct query and this is where giving the correct names of your questions for your queries really helps so i know i'm not going to make a mistake there we go that's the one i'm going to create the report on on this query add everything next Again, choose um, which table you're going to be basing your report on. So if I choose this one, it's going to be based on console name grouping. I don't want that because it says no grouping. So I'm going to choose this one. Next, I don't want any grouping on any other field. So just choose next. Um, the sorting, it says uh, sorts the data into a set, a descending order of genre. So descending or genre like that. And ascending order of rank. So second sorting is on rank ascending um fits on uh, has page orientation landscape there we go and the next one is going to be fits on a single page y so i'm just going to go to next uh the title i'm going to copy paste it from my pdf document here see just paste it there because i'm lazy and my typing is not that good so there it is and i can close the print so the, if I do go to this view here, I can first of all see that these are not in the right order. What else? We can see some of these are being chopped off. So we need to go and fix all of this. So next step, I'm gonna to go to design view and I'm going to check the order. So the order should be game title, rank, genre. So I want to move this, make that a bit smaller. Just make it small, bring the game title over here. Just make that a bit smaller first. And drag it over now i can drag these two out the way and make that game title a bit bigger and just have a look and see whether that is displaying everything now you need to go all the way down and just, oh look even though i made it so big can you see i've got a bit chopped off there so that will be a mark so i'm just going to expand that a little bit more now you want to try and only make it big enough just to fit everything but you want to conserve the space there you are still getting a little bit chopped off there uh, you want to conserve the space because you want all of these fields to fit on one page wide. So is that fit? Yep, that looks good, all of those. So after that, I want rank the genre console name. Now, usually I, oh, let's get that out of the way. I want rank first. I fast forward this part, but this time I thought I'd show you the whole process because you have to see how meticulous you really have to be when you're doing this. Uh, rank, genre, let's make that a bit bigger. Make that console name just a bit smaller and then I'll get back to it if I need to. 
So let's go see what we've got here. Okay, that fits nicely. So then I want the console name. Console name needs to be a bit bigger. So you can see it takes a bit of time. Now, again, I, I, I do these videos quite quickly and I haven't done them before. So sometimes I make mistakes. Make sure you call me out. Um, release here. By the way, you shouldn't be doing this this quickly, guys. You should be taking your time and, and working through all of this. But I want to try and make this video as complete as possible, but at the same time, as short as possible. Release here, game publisher. So I'm just going to bring that over and just double check to see if that fits. Game okay, no, I need to expand that a little bit. So there we go. Oh, a little bit more. Just come over here a bit. How much space do I have? Okay, I've got a, I've got a little bit more space. Only two prices to go. So let's see. Does that fit? Yes, it does. Go all the way down. Yes. And then, oh, what have I got? All right, home design view. And then I want the price. Now the price can be a bit smaller. Let's just get rid of that properties window there. Price is quite small, so it doesn't need to be big. And discount price, I just need to fit that name. And I think that should be okay. As far as the right order is concerned. Yes, it is. Oh, look at this, that price. I've got some hashtags there, which means um, I need to make that just a little bit bigger. That happens when there's not enough space to show the whole number. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so that I've done the, the order. Everything is displayed. Nothing's cut off. Now I need to double check the sorting. So sorts the data into descending order of genre first. So that's descending from A going. So we've got A D to A C. That's right. So it's descending. Okay, so going to D C and then going down. And then within that, I want ascending order of rank. So the rank should be increasing between these ones here. So 200, 259. So that's correct. So my sort is correct. Everything there is correct. Let's go and see what else I need to do. Has the page orientation landscape, fits a single page wide. I've done that, includes that title. Perfect. Um, calculates the earliest release year and places this below the release year column at the end of the report has the label that label there fully visible to the left of this value so the release here is going to be the smallest here so i'm going to go to the design view of my report design and here's my release here so this is the field i don't care about the title that's that's nothing that, those are just labels this one here is the the field name so i'm going to right click on that total and i'm going to choose minimum and that's going to add in my report footer now the smallest value. Now, I'm going to obviously, it's going to ask me to show me evidence of this. So I'm just going to expand that so I can make sure I can see the whole thing because I'm going to need all of that anyway. Let's have a quick view. There it is there. So that's the smallest year, 1985, and it's directly underneath the, the release here. Next to that, on the left-hand side, I want the earliest game release as a title. So I'm just going to copy that. Come over here. Now, make sure you're adding a label, not a text box. So label. I'm going to draw that there and place that there. And I can make that just a bit smaller. So you can see it's put this in the report footer because it's only going to add this value at the end of the report, not at the end of every page. I'm going to go to uh, my report view, and there we go. Earliest game release, 1985. Fine, that's great. Um, so let's see what else I want. Has your name, center number, and candidate number in the footer of the report? So it appears in the same position on every page. Now, this means I need to put this in the page footer. So I'm going to go to design view because it has to be on every page. So my page footer is in this section here. I'm going to delete these things here again. Don't need them. I'm going to add a label. So for my report design, click on label. And does it say where it reports that it appears in the same position on every page? It doesn't say where. So I'm just going to put this on the right hand side.
go and if I just select that go to home and just move it over to the right you just make it a bit neater you don't have to but there we go so at the end of the report it will have my details okay save and print your report place in your evidence document a screenshot showing the database formula used to calculate the earliest release year make sure that the formula is fully visible so that's why i need to show that evidence so if i go to my design view i need a copy of that so i'm just going to take a screenshot and i only need that but even if i take all of that that's fine go to my document so this is number 22 there you go evidence 22 so i haven't missed anything so that's great so the next time i'm going to take the screenshot is step 30. so click on save and i'm also going to print my report so i'm going to go to view make sure it's saved file print and i'm going to do a quick preview i can see this is three pages long and you can see my my details at the bottom at the end of the report everything's there just double check everything um, I'm not going to go over it again. It should, I, I really should double check that my titles are in the right order, make sure that my sorting is correct, um, descending it on genre and ascending on rank. Just double check everything. And yeah, you can give that printout in. So I'm just going to print that off. Uh, click on print as a PDF. And this is going to be report 22. Okay, done. Close that. Go back to my question paper. Let's see what we have. Well, look at that, that's 27 points. That one report, 27 points. Okay, presentation. So we're now onto the, I think the last section, task number four. Yep, task number four, presentation. So let's get started with that one. Okay, so we can see here that it starts off by saying you are going to create the short presentation. All slides must have a consistent layout and formatting. Create a presentation of five slides using the file of that file there uh, n302 guide unless otherwise instructed the slides must display a title and a bulleted list so okay uh, place in the header your name center number and candidate number right aligned so let's do 23 and 24 first so first step we're going to create a new powerpoint presentation so i'm going to right click new you can create this any way you want powerpoint presentation and i'm not going to change the name i'm just going to open this up go and now i want to import that file so i'm going to go to my new slide so from the home section new slide click on the arrow slides from outline and i'm going to go to my location which is the desktop and i want to import n2302 guide on there and there you go so everything is now in that format so what i've got a title and a bulleted list i've got five slides perfect so it then said place in the header your name center number and candidate number right aligned so i'm going to go to the view master slide or slide master and i'm going to add now can you see as soon as i go to my uh, slide master it puts me all the way down here now if i want this is for this particular layout i want to add on all the layouts i need to scroll all the way to the top and get that master slide up here and that's where i want to add my details so i'm just going to go to insert and i'm going to add the text box and i want this in the top right center number candidate place in the header in the header um so i'm just going to put this in the top right corner somewhere at the top here and just add my details go and i can just move that over and now if I go to view normal, I should have my details on every page. So that's it. Okay, um, and so I've done that part. Let's go over to the question paper. Make sure that the header appears in the same position on every slide. Well, I've done that. Change the layout of the slide with the title age rating system to a title and table. Create a table that contains three columns and six rows format the table so that so let's do that first part now in fact let's just read through this first format the table so that a plain table style is applied with no cell shading all internal and external grid lines are displayed when printed copy the data from this file here and place it uh format the so basically from what i can read from here i'm gonna read it again more carefully i need to generate this from data in that csv now personally 
If I was a student, I would just do this in, in Word because I know how to create tables in Word. Um, it, it's part of the syllabus. So that would be a, a piece of cake, a walk in the park, and then just copy paste it into PowerPoint. But we're gonna create the table directly from PowerPoint. So it's not that different. So first step is, if I go back to my presentation, I'm gonna to go to this slide here. And here it says on this slide, I'm just gonna change the layout of my slide. So I've got slide layout here. Now mine might look a little bit different because my screen is zoomed in. So everything becomes a bit smaller. And I'm just going to use this one here, title and content. By clicking on this one, I now choose what content I want. And I'm going to choose this one here, table. And I want number of columns, three, and number of rows, six. And click OK. So there's my table. Now it, it's given me a blue theme, that's fine. It says format the table so that a plain table style is applied with no cell shading. So with this table selected, up here I can see my table design. I'm gonna choose the variants. I'm just going to choose a plain table design, that one there, no style, because it didn't want any shading. All internal and external grid lines are displayed when printed. So I've got my external and my internal grid lines Plain, that's perfect. Now I want to go to the file n2302ratings.csv and place this in the table created in step 25. So I need to import that data. So let's open that up first. That's n2302, n2302ratings, this one. Let's open that up. Okay, so this is a CSV file. Um, let's just expand that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy. So these are like three, three columns, six rows, just like, so I'm just going to copy that. Now, if I make exactly the right selection, three columns and six rows and copy that. So I'm going to do control C and now go to PowerPoint and select the same size of table, three columns, six rows and press control V. It should, yay. Just enter it in there. So that's perfect. Okay, um, adjust the column width. So data in column three wraps over no more than three lines. So this one here, you can see it's got a few more lines. I can just adjust this and just bring these over. Um, I'm not gonna worry about this too much right now because I, I know I'm gonna be doing some more formatting, but um, yeah, no more than three. So less than three is okay. So I'm just gonna leave that like that for now. So we've done that, perhaps over no more than three lines. Format the table so the height of all six rows is set to two centimeters. Make sure the data in column three still wraps over no more than three lines. Okay, so I'm going to select all of these. And now from here, I should have, if I go to my layout, Okay, so this one here, this is the table size. So if I change this, this is the size of the table. So if I increase that, it increases the size of the table. But over here, I have the cell size. So I'm going to make all my cell sizes two, and I'm gonna put the units as well, CM, because if your units are different, you're using inches or your regional settings are inches, it will make it inches. So just make sure you put the units as well. And if I press enter, oh look, there you go. So everything now is two centimeters high, all of that. Great. And now it says format the table. So the first column of the table has a solid black background with white text. Columns one, two, and three look like this. So this is like the Excel exercises that they give us in paper three. We need to basically copy that. So I want to first of all merge, oh, undo that, I changed the size. I want to merge these cells together. So the first step is I'm going to go to merge cells. The next step is I want the text to be vertical and i want the text to be well, it's difficult to explain but i'm going to show you now um, so i'm going to choose that one so you're reading from the bottom upwards and i also want it aligned to the middle and the center that one and that one um, so if we have a look you can see we've got the text in the right orientation and it's center aligned we want the shading to be black and the font to be white and I'm also going to increase the size of the font and that's the right kind of font. Maybe I just make that a little bit wider. Now rating and the other two columns are all center aligned. 
uh, horizontally and vertically from what I can see. So I'm going to, just going to do that there. And in my cells, in my table design here, oh, my layout, I think, layout, is it? Yes. I'm going to center align it vertically as well. And I don't think there's anything else. Now, what I can do is I can mess about with this just a little bit to make it look exactly the same. So you can see here the, the two words which on the second line is be heard. So I can just change the size of my table just a little bit so I get exactly the same. You don't have to. But you can. You can. Well, it, it's not exactly the same, but it's more the same. It's definitely within what um it, what the requirements are so i think i've actually got it exactly this no i haven't but um it's less it's three or less lines in in column three and i think unless you see something else guys i think that's it um let's have a look all right now on the slide with the title content descriptors select the seven bulleted items bad language to suggestive themes and format them to look like this okay so let's go back and we want on the content descriptors that one so the first two should be bullets and the rest of them should be a dash and it should be indented so from here i'm going to go to my bullets bullets and numbering now i'm going to change it bulleted list i want customize I'm just going to use a dash, click OK, and OK, there you go. And I'm going to indent that. And the indent, that dash line is between the E of age and R of rating. So I'm just going to bring that just a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Why don't I adjust it from the tab at the top here? Let's do that. There you go. That's pretty much OK. So if I undo one of those indents, because it makes it a bit smaller then, I'm just going to take this tab and just drag that in. There you go. And then the next thing that I see is there's single line spacing for these ones, whereas my one is a bit more. So I'm just going to go to the paragraph and change the before and after. Let's do the before. Line spacing single will put. Let's see what that looks like. All right. And let's just go do the before and after as well. Put that to zero. There you go. That looks a lot better. I think we're done. So if I now go over here um, on the slide with the title online gaming safety format, the text age rating in the last bullet point so that when clicked, it goes to the slide with the age rating system. So let's go back. So I want online gaming, this one, and I want to look for the text. Format the text age rating, it says. So age, oh, here it is down here. Age rating. So I'm going to select that text. Now I want to make this a hyperlink. And I want this to hyperlink to a slide in the presentation age rating system. Now, guys, I've got a tutorial for PowerPoint, which talks all about action buttons, linking to URLs, linking to uh, making action buttons and all of that. Make sure you watch that because it's part of the syllabus. So this is just one of those things which is included in that video. So from here, I'm just going to right click. Well, I can right click. Why is it not popping up? It's just age rating. There you go. And if I right click, there you go. I should get in here link. Now I can do that from there, or I could go to insert and I can click on link here. So if I click on link, you get the same thing. And this time I'm not going to go to an email address. I want to go to place in this document. And the place I want to go to is age rating system and click OK. And that should make a link like that. OK, it then says, oh, where have I gone? Um, take a screenshot evidence to show that the text links to the correct slide places in your evidence document. So I'm just going to right click on that and click on edit link. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this page. And in fact, I'm also going to include at the bottom here so that they can see that I've made that link there, age rating there. They can see that this text to display is age rating. That's the page I'm going to. So number three is selected. Um, yeah, looks good. So I'm going to go to my 
evidence. That's number 30. Just make that a bit smaller. It's a bit big. It really looks a bit bigger because I've actually got my uh, page zoomed in. And just bring this evidence 30 down. Actually, why don't I just make that bring it down? Again, don't make your screenshot small. Okay. And then go back over here. Save the presentation. Oop, all right. Save the presentation and print slides two, three, four, and five only as handouts. Okay, so next step is I'm going to go to my presentation. I'm going to click on click OK here and click on save. And now I want to print slides two, three, four, and five. So that's two to five only as handouts in portrait orientation with two slides to the page, each slide filling half the page. Okay, that's a, a basic setting in PowerPoint. So I'm going to go to File, Print. I want to print from the slides. I don't want all the slides. I want from E. I can either put 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to put 2 5. So from 2 to 5. And I don't want the full page. I want this one portrait. And it's going to have each slide taking half the page. So 2 to a page. And that's four slides 2, 3, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm going to print that as a PDF, print, and I'm just going to call that PP for PowerPoint. Um, again, you will be printing on your printer. Okay, last but not least, I think, yes, finally, what a big paper. Um, printing the evidence. All right, so make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number appear on every page of your evidence document. Save your evidence document. Print your evidence document. So all I have to do now is just click on Save, File, Print, and I'm going to go print this as a PDF, and I'm just going to call that Evidence. Oh, wow, what a big paper wasn't that just a long paper there's just so much involved in that a lot of the new things coming in links in powerpoint we've got tables in powerpoint again um, these are things that we haven't really seen in previous papers um the the chart it from that we use excel to create the chart and put bring that into word so there's a lot going on there you need to be very very careful now as always guys if i have missed something i have made a mistake please call me out on it keep in mind i am doing this pretty quickly because i want to keep these video tutorials short and on that note i am going to say if you've learned something you, you found this video useful make sure you like make sure you subscribe and i'll see you again in the next video take care bye bye